All right, financial coaches, what's happening? Peter here. I want to talk to you about a concept in budgeting, which I think is going to sound very straightforward, but it's one of those that I think we overlook a lot. And I've talked a lot about this. I've actually talked to conferences about it. And it's really the idea of growing the budget pie as opposed to slicing the budget pie thinner. All right. Because one of the things that we have this tendency to do in the professional services world is say, hey, uh, when you come into me, you have income, and of that income, uh, having a good life is more about right-sizing to your income than anything else. And that is fundamentally true. But what we translate that to mean is that the income you have coming in should be sufficient, and it's your expenses that are out of whack. It's your behavior that uh, drives where you're spending your money, and that's what we need to fix. And in some cases, that's absolutely true. And I think everyone probably has a little bit of fat in their spending. You know, I certainly do, and, and part of that is just about spending money where I get utility and, and uh, spending it on some things that other people would say I would never spend money on that, but they spend money on other things that I wouldn't spend money on, right? So that's where we have to avoid these value judgments. But that doesn't necessarily mean that what they're spending on is truly fat. And it do, what it doesn't mean is that it's not adding more to their life than anything else. And so what we do is when we go through that process with the clients about how to right size their budget, oftentimes we're just looking at things and saying, uh, you know, sometimes without emotion you know what can we do to shrink this cell phone budget what can we do to shrink this insurance line item what can we do to shrink this grocery line item you know and so it's just about going in and saying hey can we move the needle can we lower everything by five percent can we get things in line by working on the expense side what that does is it leaves the income side completely untouched and it's really an area of opportunity and so i won't go into this because i do a whole 90 minute presentation on how to think about it and give you some specific tactics on what to look for some of the the, the red flags to stay away from and some of those types of things but how do we grow that income pie right and so one of the ways we can do that is with a side hustle right you maybe you get and get some more income from work and getting a promotion and those are some tactics that i talk about too but the, some of those things are out of our control and some of those things even if we deserve them even if we put in the time that's not going to happen but what you can do is figure out what we're going to do with the the remaining uh, amount of free time that we have which is a lot if you think about using 40 hours a week uh, for work you have basically two-thirds of the week left and most of the people use half of that remaining free time watching TV which probably shouldn't surprise anyone I you know I like watching movies my wife likes watching TV um, so you know that is a common pastime because everyone has access to it but when you think about the average person, I think it's something like 43 or 45 hours a week watching TV. That leaves a lot of time that we could be using to increase our income. Now, I'm not saying you have to take all of that and move it over to the income producing side. But it's something where now in the gig economy, because of technology and because of apps, you can find as little as one hour of extra work or do a full day of it or spend your evenings on it from task rabbit to grocery shopping with instacart uh, you know and there's obviously the car and ride sharing services that you could do that those two um you know personally i like getting away from that but if that's an opportunity for you, you have a car you can do that then more power to you feel free to do that but there is some expenses there uh you know including gas and wear and tear on the car that i think a lot of people undersell but um, you know, whether it's dog walking, don't overthink it, like from moving stuff, you know, there's a, a an app where people can just hire warm bodies to come and move stuff because they don't want to do it or they're not capable of doing it. And so it's just uh, sometimes producing labor, babysitting, uh, dog walking, whatever it might be, some landscaping, mowing lawn, shoveling snow. I mean, there's just a bunch of stuff. And so you don't have to overthink it. But if you use that time to increase your income, it doesn't have to be a lot. Let's say that I go in, uh, mow someone's lawn, my neighbor's lawn, and I pick up 20 bucks and it's uh, two hours, right? And maybe an hour and a half or two hours. So it's only $10 an hour, but I pick up that extra $20. Well, as we know, 70 plus percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, which means that their net earnings for the end of the month is essentially zero. So going from zero to 20 bucks is actually a fairly big move. We can't even do the math on it because zero to anything is infinity. But, you know, if someone is working their whole month at their normal job and let's say that they have surplus income of a hundred dollars at the end of the month right so this is freedom cash this is their discretionary spending it's they're going out eating money going to the movies doing all the stuff it's the it's the one time that they feel like they are in control of their life now if i add 20 bucks to that we've increased that uh, that freedom money by 20 percent because we mowed the neighbor's lawn you know now imagine that i do that once a week you know mow this neighbor's lawn every week and so i pick up 80 dollars. all of a sudden 
right? Instead of working 160 hours a month, you know, 40 hours, 40 hours, 40 hours, 40 hours at my normal job, 160 hours. Now I add in two more hours a week. So I add in another uh, eight hours. So instead of 160 hours, I'm working 168 hours, but I picked up that extra $20. I've, I've taken my $100 and moved it to $180. So I've increased my discretionary income by 80% by only increasing my work hours by you know a few percentage points, right? So a few percentage, percentage points increase in work translates to double digits, uh, maybe almost triple digit increases in my discretionary income. And so that's what I want to talk about is that, you know, when we're looking at the budget for people and we focus and we uh, hone in on the expense side, what we're doing is we're leaving that income side untouched and it's an open opportunity. And one of the things that I want to talk about is it's fine to look at the expense side, but I don't want to necessarily pour all your effort into it because it's cutting. It's actually removing something from that person's lifestyle and it's going to be painful at some level, maybe small pain, maybe great pain, but there's going to be pain. And so it's going to be um, tough for people to do it. There's going to be reluctance for people to do it. But if you look at the income stuff, and now if you can talk to them about the mentality about where is your free time going, is that really adding the value to you? Would you be willing to part with any of that free time, right? Maybe even enjoy a, something like a side hustle or a, a side gig, right? Can you now translate that into money? And what will that do for our bottom line? And will that give us opportunity, say, to take time off or to go on vacation or to buy that, that new thing or go out for dinner or take the family out and actually enrich our lives in a way that when we're just cutting is going to pare back our lives so one that's one of the things that i really work with um, my clients on is how do we uh, crack the mentality of what i have coming in is static it's it's never going to change right so once we can burst that bubble a little bit and open ourselves up to the possibilities and what we can do on the income side um, i will tell you that i have been regularly uh, overwhelmed by what people can accomplish. I have been regularly surprised at uh, expecting people to come up with another 20 or 40 or 50 bucks a week, and they end up coming up with 100 or 200 a week, right? And in fact, I was working with someone who was just living uh, paycheck to paycheck, you know, just kind of getting by, was always worried about the next big thing, was always worried about the dates that she couldn't go on, you know, uh, was worried about getting into a relationship that maybe she couldn't afford and she was going to let someone down. And she was picking up bartending only on a Thursday evening because that was when she was available to do it. And she was regularly picking up 150 to $200 a night working from the end of the day from happy hour to closing time. And so it was just one day a week. Now, it was, you know, that's five or six hours maybe. But it was just one day a week, and she was picking up almost $200 a week. That was almost $800 a month in additional income. And when I think about what that did for her, it just helped her pay off her car loan. It helped her get ahead, put away savings, start retirement accounts, like all these things with just one evening a week. And it wasn't something she had to overthink and it was something that she was good at and actually enjoyed and meeting and talking to people and, and engaging with people in a way that, uh, you know, was fun and not overly burdensome. So it can be different for anyone. You know, maybe someone's a wedding singer or they want to uh, tutor and teach piano out of their house. It doesn't really matter. And, and I don't want people to overthink it and think about building a business and getting uh, too convoluted. But what I really want is just to break the mentality that uh, the only opportunity there is on the expense side. So hopefully that helps. Go out there, keep changing lives, including your own. See you later.